We believe that every small group should be led by a team. But you as the small group leader are the one who needs to equip, train, and to lead your team. And that means you're going to need to have regular team meetings. We've developed a tool to help you get the most out of those meetings. It's called simply the Team Meeting Planner. And you can use it before the meeting to help you to plan a purposeful discussion with your team. And you can use it during the meeting to take notes about decisions or assignments that are made. Now, we believe that you should probably meet with your team uh, once a month to make sure you're on top of things and you're moving forward purposefully. And that might even be more during certain phases of your team's life, like uh, the launch phase or as your group is preparing to reproduce. And the people who should be there should be your co-leaders, plus anyone that you are preparing to become a co-leader, you're apprenticing them into a potential future co-leader role. And you can use the team meeting planner to help give purpose and direction to your meetings in five key areas. And these five areas are reflected by the five boxes that you see on the worksheet. The first thing is evaluate. With the overall direction of your group in mind, you want to write down one to three areas that you want to evaluate. And you can use the small group feedback form or use the group reproduction plan. Those are other worksheets that are helpful to evaluation. You, they have some ideas on those about what areas you might need to evaluate in your group. For example, how are you progressing toward making disciples who make other disciples? How is your group moving forward toward reproducing another group? Those are things you could evaluate or elements of those goals could be evaluated. You can also evaluate what's going on in the lives of individual people in your group. Uh, what are their needs? What are their issues? How are they progressing? Using the full circle model of discipleship to help you with that. And then there's a place on the form you can see there in the notes section, you can write down some of the takeaways that come out of your evaluation process. Now, the second thing after you evaluate is to plan. Now, based on your evaluation, then the next step is to talk about what you need to do next to help the group and the group members move forward. Are there major steps that need to be taken? Are there initiatives you need to take? What series are you going to study next? Are there any special events that you need to plan together? Now, for the nuts and bolts of planning your group meetings, then there's another worksheet called the Group Schedule Planner. It helps you plan each week's small group meeting a week by week for a month at a time. And so you have to ask in the planning here, are there some discussions that we need to have in our small group to get everybody involved in that we can make some plans together about something that we want to do? And then are there some things that we need to take the initiative toward in the lives of individual people in the group? Is there a phone call that someone needs to make? Is there uh, someone who needs to be mentored or someone who needs to be invited into leadership? You can use all of this under the planning box and there's room there for you to take notes about the decisions that you make. And then the next step in your team meeting is to make assignments. So you see a box there called assign. In this part of your team meeting, you're going to decide who needs to actually do what in order to achieve the plans that you've just made. So who's going to lead what elements of the upcoming small group meeting? or what elements of any events that you decide to have. And this is where the group schedule planner comes into play. That's the worksheet that will help you to work that out. But who's going to make phone calls? Who's going to have mentoring conversations? You know, who's going to lead aspects of your next team meeting? Not just your small group meeting, but your, but your team meeting. So don't forget that if you want your group to grow and if you want to reproduce, then you have to give ministry away. And this assignment box is a great way to figure out what ministry you're going to give away and who you're going to give it to. So you're de deliberate about that. And then the, the fourth box there you see is called train. Groups that are really going to take off are going to spend some time in each team meeting training. You're going to train your co-leaders and you want to start with basic series like foundations, mentor training, small group training. And once all of your people have been through those basic series, then you can choose a conversation, maybe one or two conversations for each meeting from our small group resources page, where there are literally dozens of great training conversations about how to do small groups better, how to do mentoring better. You can choose things that fit the needs of your group and of your team. You can send that conversation out in advance in a text message or an email, but just make sure that you have an opportunity to talk about it together with your team leaders, with your group, 
every time that your team meets. Now there's one last box you see on that worksheet. It's maybe the most important one. And at the very bottom, we encourage you to pray. Of course, we know that dependence on God is critical for any kind of successful leadership. But also when you pray together as a team, it sets a caring tone for your team and for your group as you pray for one another and you pray for the needs of the group itself. Now listen, your leadership team meeting is way too important for you to just wing it. So use the team meeting planner to help keep your team on track with the things that matter most.